hello everybody and uh, with this video we can start uh, entering into the first topics of the course uh, and as we mentioned uh, the first uh, uh, topic that we are going to talk to uh, with about are um, concerning the javascript language uh, uh, we uh, call it here the, the language of the web because it's the, the main the most important uh, uh, asset that we have uh, to be able to control uh, all our web applications um, I, I reported here in this uh, uh, slide uh, a couple of uh, uh, cheat sheets, uh, so some uh, very uh, short uh, uh, summary of, of the main methods and functions uh, uh, that are available in the uh, JavaScript standard library. Of course, uh, we don't have to, to learn that by heart, but it's uh, uh, nice to have a quick reference uh, if, we need to, if we need to. Uh, even if you will see that um, there's a lot of documentations available, no, but I find this and find this uh, useful for some uh, as a quick check uh, if you want. So maybe you can want to to, to download and print it uh, uh, to have it uh, ready to you uh, while we are programming. Okay, but uh, um, aside from the cheat sheet, uh, we have to actually learn uh, what we are doing. And uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, into the introduction to the course in general, is that uh, f our first goal, our first step, uh, would be to learn uh, JavaScript as a language. So not just uh, in the context of a browser or in the context of a quick, uh, uh, how to create a quick animation or something like that, uh, but uh, uh, really uh, being uh, able to, to master the language, to understand uh, its constructs uh, and so on and uh, uh, we do that uh, uh, we already know or we you already know several programming languages that go from c to java and maybe some of python uh, some of you maybe a little bit of c sharp and so on and uh, um, each language has their own specific uh, programming pattern has their own specific semantics so some things that look similar on the surface uh, maybe they are not so similar deep down and they actually uh, lead to unexpected behaviors uh, on the part of your program because maybe we assume that a given um, semantic concept, programming concept that we learned on a one language, language could transfer easily onto the others. Um, so uh, we'll try to focus more on those aspects of the language that are specific to JavaScript uh, and then make it different from, uh, from other languages. JavaScript is a, uh, is a long history. Uh, it dates um, 20 years back, more or less, uh, and so in every version you can find different features, some things that are working well, some things that are working not so well, and also the language itself evolved uh, a lot, uh, and even in the basic stuff like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, declaring variables has changed uh, more than once during uh, the history of the language. So we are not historians, we are not archaeologists, uh, uh, we want uh, uh, to do web development with the program, uh, modern programming tools, so we will focus uh, on a version of JavaScript uh, from 2015 on. So uh, uh, in, since uh, the version 6, uh, ES6 version, ex um, that we'll, we'll see in a moment what is, uh, all these acronyms mean, uh, roughly in 2015 there was a standardized version of the language uh, that is still evolving uh, so there will be in yes, 7, 8 and so on, um, but the main uh, revolution, let's say, was made in this year. So we'll uh, take in, uh, for granted that uh, the kind of language we are using is the modern JavaScript that started to evolve and is still evolving in, um, with the version 6 of the language itself. Uh, we'll try um, at the moment uh, to be um, a bit of uh, over uh, the specifics of the runtime environments. Uh, we'll know that in this course we'll uh, have to deal with two different uh, runtime environments. Uh, some code, uh, some JavaScript code, is running on the browsers, on the client side, and some other code will uh, run on the server side into the Node.js container, which is a, a JavaScript runtime that has been uh, also evolving a lot uh, uh, during the years. Of course, two different runtimes uh, that are implementing the same language, uh, well, are not exactly the same. Hmm? Uh, the language support is more or less the same if we don't do any esoteric uh, things. Uh, but of course, the uh, APIs and the libraries that are available on the client side will be different from the APIs and libraries that are available on the server side. So 
there will be a difference uh, later on but uh, for the moment we'll try to not think about this difference not think about the, the runtime environment uh, just think about the language and this uh, the knowledge in this first part uh, about the language will transfer easily to every runtime environment that we have today and in the future so uh, for this first uh, part uh, we div divided uh, the javascript language in several blocks in several uh, uh, parts because uh, uh, we want to be more or less incremental so we s we touch down the uh, the fundamentals of the language uh, in this first part and in some of the second uh, and then we'll go deeper in some specific aspects uh, that are more relevant uh, to the specifics of web programming hmm? so we start with simple stuff uh, so this class will be um, uh, mostly an overview of the language uh, with some focus some deep dive uh, onto some uh, specific uh, uh, peculiarity of the language uh, so these the, are the topics for today's uh, uh, talk first of all uh, where did it come from what are the versions what was the fuss about all these uh, different acronyms that uh, that uh, go with go with uh, the javascript name well i i stole this slide uh, um, from from a slide share presentation uh, that gave up um, a rough timeline of what happened to javascript okay so um we see that JavaScript was invented around 1995, hmm? so it's uh, uh, 15, uh, 25 years now that the, uh, the language exists. Uh, it was in originally a quick hack, so uh, a week long of programming, not much more, by this guy here, Brendan Hike, that was the, uh, at the moment uh, working with the Netscape Corporation, and so it was the invented inside Netscape, uh, Oh, Netscape, you don't know that, but uh, it's uh, one of the first uh, browsers uh, that was uh, popular before Chrome and so on. And uh, it was uh, actually the grand-grandfather of Firefox today. Uh, these people invented the language, uh, just as a quick script. Uh, but uh, later on, as a lot of websites started to use the language to, to improve their content and their interaction, uh, there uh, was the need uh, of standardizing the language itself. Of course, there was a, a, a war between um, browser uh, creators uh, uh, on different uh, nuances, different versions of, and of implementation of JavaScript, but we won't look into that. Uh, we will uh, see that the, the first the the trunk of the evolution uh, is governed by uh, standardization uh, driven by uh, ECMA, ECMA, which is a, a Swiss-based uh, standardization institution. So they didn't go to IEEE, they didn't go to ISO to standardize, they went to ECMA. And ECMA uh, created a committee, uh, that uh, uh, committee uh, 262 is the num number uh, that was assigned to this standard, and this committee uh, was in charge of evolving the language across different, uh, um, different versions. And you see that we have the first uh, standard version of, of ECMAScript, uh, which, uh, which was just a couple of years after its uh, uh, first appearance. What we notice, uh, we don't need to, uh, to see all the details here, but what I notice is a strong jump here from ES3, oh, well, ES, we now understand this is a shorthand for ECMAScript. This is the official language name of the language so the name of the language is not javascript but rather the standard version is ecmascript nobody calls it in that way also because it's difficult to pronounce uh, we all call, continue to call it javascript but we refer to the specific es version of it so as we see there was a, a big jump a 10 years jump between ES3 and ES5. Oh, by the way, there's no ES4 in the in between because it was a failed attempt. It was trying to work on ES4 and didn't work out, and so they they just threw away that version and they jumped to five. So uh, before uh, 1999, we have the old JavaScript. It's it was more scripting language with some modern stuff, but mostly um, thought and designed for uh, quickly implementing something uh, from es5 so 2009 so it's, uh, it's a bit uh, of, of 10 years uh, more than 10 years now um, that we have uh, this version available uh, the language changed its face 
and it became it started becoming the modern JavaScript that we know uh, that we know today uh, and uh, especially with the introduction of this kind of strict mode which was a an incompatible change to the language so some language constructs that were the basis uh, of the first versions were thrown out uh, and uh, we can opt to not use the old syntax the old semantics and try to use uh, some more robust uh, um, semantics now so there we, we will mention here and there uh, what were some strangeness of the first version and we know that today in strict mode we can avoid some very strange behaviors of the language uh, the language evolved uh, uh, again with the ES6. Uh, again, there's a bit of jump from 2009 and to 2015. There was six years of work where uh, the object uh, of the orientation of the language was made more explicit. Uh, so uh, by including classics, by including uh, um, asynchronous, uh, uh, more explicit asynchronous constructs, uh, um, and so on. So this is the main our main target, uh, so our main milestone, uh, ES6 uh, or JavaScript 2015. Some people also used ES2015 as a tag. Uh, we are all uh, talking about the same language. So ECMAScript version 6 uh, of uh, the, what it was standardized uh, uh, five years ago, more or less. Uh, of course, the language is still ongoing. The ECMAScript uh, uh, committee is uh, um, committed to release a new version every year. Hmm? And we see that we have an, office, an offset of, of one <laughs> between the year and the version. So ES6 is from 15, ES7 is from 17, ES8 is from uh, 18. We have now ES9 uh, was published in 2018 and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, every year we have new versions uh, and uh, this new version adds, of course, something to the language. Uh, in general, uh, people also talk about some ES next concept, saying, okay, whatever is the next version, whatever it is, uh, the, the, the most current version right now. Uh, that includes all the, uh, all the bells and whistles of the, of the new um, release. So basically, we will use ES6 uh, as a reference in this language, but sometimes we also use uh, some features for more uh, recent versions that are uh, right now well supported. Um, so this is the text uh, the explanation of that. Um, we, if you really want, and if you are uh, really into uh, languages and compilers, you can find uh, the formal uh, standard of ECMA, uh, ECMAScript uh, in this web page here, link to the bottom. And uh, uh, just be aware that the formal definition of the language is something like 600 pages, but uh, uh, it requires a lot of effort and is really written from the language designer point of view, not from the user point of view. Of course, uh, it contains the truth, not the ulti ultimate truth about uh, uh, how a concept works, but it's not always easy hmm, to decode. This is the language. Of course, the language needs uh, to run somewhere, to run into some engine. Uh, JavaScript is a partially interpreted and partially a compiled language uh, it's compiled to an intermediate format uh, and then it needs a runtime to execute that intermediate format and uh, today uh, we have uh, um, two main two main uh, engines that run javascript programs basically we have the vi v8 engine that was uh, uh, developed by uh, google which is the JavaScript engine that is powering Chrome and Chromium. And this is the same engine, the same in language interpreter and compiler is used also in Node.js uh, uh, on the server side. Then we have the Gecko uh, engine, um, sorry, the Gecko uh, library that uh, is uh, used to build the Firefox uh, uh, browser by, Mo the, by the Mozilla Foundation. And this uh, JavaScript engine is called the Spider Monkey engine. Uh, being, that, that is being used in Firefox. So actually there are two different libraries, two different uh, runtimes that are executing the same, more or less the same uh, version of JavaScript. Uh, there was also an implementation, a JavaScript implementation by Microsoft that was uh, uh, trying to push it into its uh, new Edge browser uh, that was the, uh, published for the first time in, uh, in Windows 10. But you, uh, as everybody knows, uh, the Edge browser is now being repackaged uh, on top of Chromium 
uh, engine so today uh, also edge uh, it from my by microsoft is using the v8 javascript engine by google so actually there's not a there's not a lot of uh, diversity you know, in the in the in the runtime uh, landscape uh, this is a bit of a problem because actually uh, all the programs are all the sa uh, real execution uh, behavior of the programs are controlled by just two companies google and mozilla basically all the others are really uh, minor and are being obsolete in some way uh, by the way also uh, you know that all chromium also will, is powering um, safari as a browser so uh, a lot of browsers really are based uh, on this engine by google and if we have uh, different engines and they are implemented integrated into different browsers uh, we should always have the question about how and whether and how much a given language feature is supported by different browsers uh, i don't know to look in, at the it is a, just a sample picture taken from the mdn mozilla development network uh, that uh, at, at mdn does a very great job of listing for each and every language construct for each and every library functions in the standard libraries of course uh, the level of support uh, by the different browsers so we, we don't want to read uh, all the names but we see that the, on the top we have different browsers that are desktop browsers or mobile browsers uh, we have all of them here and uh, uh, for each of them the different uh, maybe methods of a given class uh, can be supported if the class uh, if the um, uh, the cell is green or is not they are not supported or they're just supported from a given version on so we have version numbers here uh, or maybe supporting some weird cases uh, where we have, we have not uh, and uh, and the explanation for that so we can be aware of uh, uh, if we are trying to use uh, a language feature especially if we are talking about the uh, newest language feature that were introduced in the latest years uh, we can have a look actually at, at which browsers this feature will be supported on not all of them of course and uh, it's a moving target uh, uh, browsers are evolving and the language is evolving too so we as designers we should be aware whether we can use a given feature uh, only if uh, uh, it will be supported by the majority of our browsers uh, as you see uh, internet explorer uh, is really and also safari and are in, in some way lacking behind some of the newest features internet explorer by the way is not uh, developed anymore so we should try to forget about it uh, it was a long story of hate uh, but uh, now it's um, it's over while at the, uh, at the same time edge is catching up uh, because of, of of course it's an aligning aligning with with chrome so remember if you're trying to use some new language features uh, first check uh, its compat compatibility metrics uh, in this case uh, it was a front-end feature only but otherwise you also have one column for node uh, not js uh, uh, runtime on the server so uh, with this moving target how did the javascript uh, uh, designers uh, uh, think yeah well javascript designers uh, decided that javascript should be a backwards compatible but not forwards compatible language what does it mean well a backwards compatible language is a language uh, where you can be sure that if you are writing some code today that code will still run next year in five years in 10 years with the future version of the language so future versions of the language will not break current code uh, there is a, a motto for the tc39 members of the ecma committee we don't break the web so this means that in today in 2020 we still have some code that was written maybe in 1995 that is still running and is still running in the same way as it did uh, 25 years ago so every change to the language was made in with the care so that the existing code would not break and this is a, is a bigger legacy of course and it's very uh, it's a heavy one because it means that uh, uh, bad decisions in the language design early on uh, are still reflected in the language today or well, they can be avoided because now we have better let's say uh, ways or better uh, language construct to do a given uh, um, operation but there still are in the language for the people that insist on using old and wrong uh, ways of programming but it's just uh, as it is we, we don't 
uh, there will never be a, a, a future version of a browser that will not be able to run some current code. On the other hand, uh, JavaScript is not forward compatible, means that uh, uh, if you are writing some code today, it will not run in older browsers. Maybe depending, of course, on the on the on the construct that you're using. Uh, you saw the compatibility matrix a moment ago uh, was actually telling us the same construct. Uh, well, a given language feature is only available from a given browser versions onward, so it's not backward. Um, so this uh, as an implication so that uh, uh, our code uh, as we write it today uh, could not run maybe in older browsers uh, uh, the other uh, we can see also in say that, that also in the other way around uh, if I have a browser uh, which is not fully updated my browser will not be able to run the uh, most recent code uh, this somewhat to be expected, somewhere normal, but in, an, in a complex uh, ecosystem like the, the web, uh, it, may be, it may be a problem. Uh, and so there are ways uh, around that. The only uh, really not, uh, the only change that was not backwards compatible is the introduction of uh, strict mode. Strict mode, as we see, is a, uh, is a directive to the uh, JavaScript compiler not to consider uh, a syntax uh, that was uh, deemed to be some way dangerous in the language and this was introduced very early on in the language design so if your program is running in strict mode it's asking not to be backwards compatible before es6 so before 2015 if your code is not running in strict mode then it will be backwards compatible back to 1995 but we probably don't want that don't need that huh, in most cases so but it's the only um, incompatibility that was introduced in the language uh, and you must ask for it so no, it's not the default hmm? uh, but against the forward incompatibility what can we do so maybe we have some code that where we really want to use a feature and we know that maybe most of the users have an updated version of chrome and an updated version of firefox so they will run, ju run just fine but some users will have some older browsers so should we refrain from using the newest uh, language features uh, in order to support also the users with older browsers or should we just use them and uh, forget about those users and uh, force them to uh, to update in some way well actually there's a third way uh, being able to use the uh, say modern features the latest features and at the same time supporting uh, say uh, users that are stuck with the uh, oldest version of, of browsers actually there are two methods that are used uh, usually uh, together uh, the first method is called the transpiling transpiling means uh, uh, taking a source code and compiling it to another source code so compiling trans uh, towards uh, another version of the same language uh, well where the newest language features are converted to equivalent or nearly equivalent uh, in the older version so if you, have a, you are using a syntax that was not supported before, transpiling will rewrite your code and uh, uh, re-implement the same feature using the older syntax. So this transpiled code will also be able to run on the older browsers. This may happen on the fly in runtime or usually uh, you are the transpiling running uh, at the server side uh, and, and preparing different versions of your code depending on the kind of browsers uh, it is going to run on. The other uh, technique called uh, polyfilling, polyfill is a strange word, uh, means actually filling the holes. Uh, no? So uh, if a feature of the language is not supported by the standard libraries, well, nobody uh, prevents you from implementing that function and adding it to the standard library as we will see um, next week uh, the javascript summer language uh, library can be extended so you can easily extend the interface uh, the apis of uh, standard objects also so you can uh, with some carefully crafted code add uh, um, methods and the types and objects to the standard libraries that were not there at the beginning so in this case you can find that the given library is missing a method for example and uh, uh, because it's running on older uh, runtime engine and so you can define it uh, like a user defined function but that will behave 
uh, as the real uh, object uh, all of this is supported by current uh, uh, say development environments uh, so in many cases uh, as we will see uh, when we jump into the react framework uh, react is doing both uh, both of these uh, things at the same time mm? so we don't need to care about those so what we are uh, doing is learning the uh, the modern version of JavaScript uh, try to work always in strict mode and we know uh, that we have a, uh, some sort of uh, security uh, that our code will also be able to run in browsers that were not uh, uh, the latest version uh, because of these two mechanisms that uh, uh, the most JavaScript frameworks uh, offer us and uh, they work quite well hmm? so in a way we are uh, overcoming this limitation of forward compatibility and supporting that with uh, uh, tricks uh, around the compilation of the language and uh, uh, empowering of the standard library uh, so far uh, we just talked about environments so let's have a look at uh, what are the kind of environments where we can uh, run our code on uh, javascript es6 or uh, or later uh, can be run we already said that on the server side using the node.js uh, on the browser or um, in other many other contexts uh, in particular we use yuan for for teaching um, uh, if you want to of course you need to install uh, node.js on your computer to be able to, able to work and here i put the links uh, uh, to the installation instruction for Node.js on the Unix servers or Linux servers, uh, which is the our favorite platform, basically. So try to uh, you can follow these instructions uh, uh, that point you how to install that uh, using a package manager. So uh, by uh, using the packages of your operating systems, uh, you can you run Node.js on Windows native. So there are instruction from Microsoft that, that will enable you to run. Uh, um, node on uh, on windows and uh, uh, you know that the latest versions have a very nice addition which is called the wsl windows subsystem for linux there was all raw uh, in the insider now in the insider versions of windows uh, they are uh, there we have a worse version 2 which is much uh, more uh, powerful from the uh, say performance point of view and uh, it's my favorite environment by the way so it's the one that i will be using in, in this in these first classes and here are the instructions to to um, to deploy node.js in wsl uh, beware that the uh, version 2 is only available if you are in the windows insider program that we can enable if you have windows 10 otherwise you have a functionality which is called wsl1 which works more or less in the same way even if it's slower so it's less recommended actually uh, this is a sort of a virtual machine running Linux uh, inside your Windows installation and uh, uh, you can execute uh, Linux programs uh, inside Windows tr thanks to this transparent uh, um, this sort of transparent uh, uh, virtual machine as uh, uh, I mentioned uh, we also need to understand the language while we are learning it uh, and uh, I suggest you have a look at this website uh, uh, oh, it's called Python Tutor. What does it have to do with JavaScript? Be well, basically, this functionality was developed uh, by uh, um, uh, a teacher, a professor, and uh, uh, for teaching Python. But then he, he extended that uh, uh, to uh, to JavaScript um, also. And so the website is still pythontutor.com/slash/javascript. Will give you the JavaScript interpreter. It's something like this, which is very um uh, nice to you oh, sorry is this one uh it's an environment where you when you where you can write code for example uh, a is, is one for example and we show you graphically uh on, on the size of your code uh the uh graphically what is happening with your code uh, uh in real time while while executing that uh, uh, immediately so it will use it a lot uh, for understanding data structures how variables and data structures arrays objects and so on work in javascript because we can have a, a very easy visualization of what's, of what's happening in, in my code in your code and so on um okay this is an example we, we have a bit more complex uh, uh, program where we have strings arrays and so on and we see that uh, uh, 
the, vis um, the tool, the Python tutor, is able to visualize all the primitive types and also the arrays and the derived type uh, that are um, uh, outside the global frame, that are in the, uh, in the global object space uh, of the program. And um, so we can, uh, with, with arrows as references and pointers, uh, uh, that will really, really help us to understand how the language is working. So I like it very much. Okay, that's for the, the preface. Uh, let's try to start to, to jump into the, the, the features of the language. Uh, as I mentioned, I'll try to uh, not to be too boring in every detail of the language and trying to uh, take it to account that you are already accustomed to programming and to different programming languages. So we'll try to focus only on um, what are the specific uh, features of this language. First of all, uh, a JavaScript program is uh, contained in one file. So every file where you write uh, uh, JavaScript is one, uh, one program. Uh, it's not just one library, one function. Like, uh, for example, if you come from, you have to think about C, the C language, uh, a program is uh, Put together by linking a code in several files uh, so there is no concept of linking here in javascript you have one file so this start from the beginning to the end uh, and it will run independently from other uh, javascript files so each file is uh, loaded and independently from each other even if they are loaded in the same web page hmm? this is a this strange thing this is good because uh, uh, a a problem, a, um, a syntax error or a crash in some in one file that you are including will not prevent the other ones from running. So that was the reason why each file was processed separately. But also at the same time, we, we do want uh, different parts of our web page to collaborate together, even if they are living in several files. And uh, uh, there are tricks uh, to let different programs or different JavaScript code in different JavaScript files to collaborate in some way, to work together, to exchange information in two ways, basically. One is using global states. Global variables are common to all JavaScript programs running on a given environment. There is a global object in Node, there is a window object in, um, in uh, browsers that is shared across all the JavaScript programs. Of course, uh, collaborating through global variables is not very nice uh, and uh, modern JavaScript versions have introduced uh, module mechanisms, uh, well actually more than, more than one, right now we are converging on a, on a same one, but there, was, there were uh, say different uh, proposals uh, how, how to implement modules, uh, so if you're coming from, from Python, uh, you, have the, you know the import statement, uh, or you may uh, also from Java you have imp you can import packages. No, so this mechanism was not available in JavaScript at the beginning. It's uh, it became available only recently with modules and includes uh, that actually allow different programs to access this state sharing uh, in a cleaner way than just uh, say throwing a, a global uh, a variable into the global pool of of, uh, of uh, visible variables. Uh, is JavaScript uh, compiled or interpreter? Well, both of them. Actually, the execution of our JavaScript program is uh, uh, in two separate passes. One, the file is totally parsed, and then it will be executed from the first uh, to the last uh, instruction of the parsed structure. So this means that if you have a syntax error on line 200 of your code, while the code will not start from line one, will not start at all. Hmm? So if the code cannot be parsed, cannot be read, it contains syntax errors, it will not run even from the first instruction. If the code can be parsed correctly, then it will be executed instruction by instruction like an interpreter language. So it's not a real interpreter language. If you're writing a bash script, uh, uh, which is really an interpreted, uh, while the instructions are read really uh, line by li line. By line. It's if you have enough syntax error in line 12, that all the code up to line 11 will be executed. This is not the case in JavaScript, which is good because it can prevent us some, from some bad errors that can be discovered only later on. And also, as every language, uh, we should be aware that with one 
uh, once we learn the language uh, probably the most important thing to do is also to learn the standard library so the c language without the standard, uh, standard library will be nothing the java language without the standard library will be nothing python uh, without a, a very extensive language library would be uh, useless and so on uh, the standard library is not the language hmm? but it's very strictly uh, linked with the language so in some cases we will learn some functions some apis uh, of the standard library and they will uh, allow us to use really well the the language features even if they are outside the language itself this is also a problem in the official documentation because the official documentation of the language the ecma 262 standard talks about the language and not about uh, the library that comes with it mm. but so just a, uh, a detail but we should be aware where the language ends and the standard library begins uh, from the Textual point of view, JavaScript is a uh, is a, a language that has been built in Unicode since the beginning. So uh, you can use uh, uh, um, special characters or language-specific characters everywhere into strings, also as variable names. Maybe we don't suggest it, uh, but it doesn't cause any problems like uh, other types of languages um one strange uh, issue is that semicolons to terminate the statements like the one that uh, are mandatory in c and in java and they, are not, they don't exist in python for example in java they are um, they are supported but not mandatory so uh, if you forget a semicolon in most cases the interpreter will uh, insert one for you uh, the only problem is that you are forgetting that uh, uh, semicolon in a place where there can be an ambiguity over the next line whether inserting it or not uh, will change the meaning of the language so uh, my suggestion is let's try to use semicolons uh, that get used to that uh, so we don't uh, have to rely on, uh, an aut on automatic insertion but it's not an error to forget those uh, as all the C-based languages is case sensitive, uh, comments are use the same syntax as in C, and uh, well, identifiers, letters, and so on. They start uh, the identifiers uh, are combination of letters, uh, dollars, and uh, underscores, and possibly numbers uh, after the first position. And the syntax, uh, well, for our first look, uh, it's similar to C. As let's say, like uh, okay, I could say C-like, or I could say C++ like, or Java like. Uh, uh, in a way, we have uh, uh, braces and semicolons uh, just to to make us familiar. But it doesn't mean that it behaves in the same way. Hmm. So about the semicolon, uh, I say that uh, oh, people can be can get really angry about their positions, about whether semicolons are needed or not. Uh, well, the language is very clear. Uh, uh, the end of line, if the end of line uh, of a code, uh, um, well, if the beginning of the next line cannot uh, uh, complete the statement of the current one so it could it would cause a, if you join two line it would cause a, a syntax error well then the javascript interpreter will add a semicolon for you at the end of the previous line uh, except uh, when uh, the just imagine taking the next line and put it, um, joining it with the previous one and if you can read the statement without any syntax error then the, the semicolon it will not be inserted and so uh, what this happens mainly if the next line will start with an uh, open parenthesis uh, where it could be interpreted as a function call on the previous line uh, or a, um, a bracket that can be interpreted as an indexing of the previous uh, line so in these cases it's, uh, there's an ambiguity and probably the javascript interpreter will uh, do the wrong thing uh, for you in that case the semicolon must be inserted manually but in, you can choose whether to remember this rule or just to put the semicolons in it's up to you um, as we mentioned uh, to use the feature of es5 or well, not to use the feature of es5 but to disable some features that were not uh, in es5 uh, or es6 uh, you can use a uh, uh, use strict uh, uh, di directive this is a strange it's not a language uh, construct it's not a command that would cause a syntax error uh, it's not a reser reserved word uh, uh, that would cause a syntax error in uh, old version it's just a string so if you put at the beginning of your file of every file this string use strict semicolon 
and this should come before any executable uh, line so it can it, it should be the first line of the file or at most you can have some comments or some empty line before but i won't uh, suggest it uh, just remember to uh, to begin every file with this uh, line always so in this case uh, the code will run in strict mode in modern mode i i don't want to read the details here about all the uh, small changes that the uh, uh, strict mode will uh, um, will implement will will change hmm? so for our point of view we will always use uh, the first line of our program like user strict hmm? okay um, let's go into the the language so this what right now we know we understand that we have just one file uh, we write all our program in our file uh, later on we will learn about modules to make uh, pr bigger programs made uh, of uh, contribution from different files uh, and so what do we put into these files well the first step is uh, um, learning about uh, variables so the values that we can handle with the program uh, in most of the part of this uh, um, presentation uh, we try to put some references to the books that we were defining at the beginning so that you, where you can go and read into more depth uh, this kind of topic. Um, so JavaScript has a very simple type system. Uh, the strange thing to, that we should have clear from the beginning is that uh, JavaScript variables don't have types. JavaScript variables have not, are not typed objects so some some person will say that javascript uh, language doesn't have types it's not correct the variables don't have types but every value has a type so in javascript uh, values are assigned uh, sorry types are assigned to values and not to variables variables are just the names that can be that we can use to access a value uh, if you are familiar with Python, it's exactly the same uh, uh, semantics. Uh, every uh, value you use in a program has a, a very definite type. Uh, it's not true that it doesn't have a type. Sim simply, the variable that you use to access that value, well, the same variable can be used uh, in, in different moments to point to different values. And those different values may have different types. It's not a problem. Uh, we have... Uh, only five primitive types in JavaScript, and then we have some uh, composition, uh, some say higher level uh, types that can be uh, defined. The primitive types are uh, number, boolean, and string. So it can feel strange that strings are primitive types in JavaScript, but actually they are. So they are not arrays of characters, they are a native type, a primitive type, an atomic type. Hmm? Uh, we have number, we don't have integer and real, so the number type uh, covers both uh, integer and double and float and so on. We only have one type uh, that will be automatically internally represented in one way or another depending on, the, on its value. Hmm? And of course we have the boolean value, which is uh, uh, only has two values, true and false, and two strange uh, types that are null and undefined and null only has a one one variable value which is null and undefined only has one possible value which is undefined these are usually uh, used for uh, representing missing values in arrays in, in functions and so on well, we'll see how to use them so except these strange types that are there for handling uh, strange conditions uh, the type system of JavaScript is only composed of numbers, booleans, and strings. And of course, all the uh, constructs for building more complex types. So in JavaScript, we can create objects, we can create arrays, we can create functions, and of course, user-defined objects. So the, uh, the objects we can create are, we already have uh, arrays, which are uh, objects defined by the language, functions that also are objects defined, predefined by the language, or we can define our own objects. So these are uh, basically the, the cornerstones of the language, uh, uh, objects, uh, arrays, and functions that we uh, have to, to learn very, very deeply. Um, okay, let's have some, some detail about uh, these primitive types. Uh, the, the simplest type that we use is the Boolean type. 
um, well, uh, it's easy to say the Boolean contains uh, true and false, but actually when you are evaluating expressions in the language, um, one may, well, may ask uh, what, uh, what is the rule uh, for determining if a, uh, is a if a value is true or false. For example, if you remember C, every uh, zero is false and every value different by z from zero is uh, true, hmm? is interpreted as true. So there, there is a rule also in JavaScript. The rule says that uh, there are only two, three, four, five, six values that are interpreted as false. They are called false values. Here, yeah, sorry, here, yeah. false values. Zero, minus zero, well, not a number, undefined null and the empty, the empty string are falsy. So are, they are interpreted as false whenever a Boolean context is asked. Every other value is true. Is, in, is truthy, so it's interpreted as true in the context where wherever it may appear. So a number different by zero, also an empty array or an empty object are true. An empty string is false. This is a sort of a symmetry which can create some, some problems, some ambiguity, some, some times, so we must be aware of that. The empty string is false, the empty array is true. Is interpreted as true when it, when it appears in a Boolean context. Also, Booleans are, gener are generated in many cases by comparisons, and so one strange thing about uh, uh, JavaScript, which made it famous, uh, is the, the, the duality of comparison operators. So we have the traditional comparison operator, equal, equal, and JavaScript also has a triple equal comparison operator. The, what's the difference? Well, the difference is that the triple equal comparison operator is the rom normal comparison. So it takes two values and try to <coughs> compare them if they have the same type so it can compare a number with a number a string with a string an object with an object and so on um, the double equal comparison operator does one step for uh, more first before trying to compare the objects uh, it will uh, uh, try to convert their, their types so that they are compatible so the double equal comparison can compare a number with a string and uh, first we, th we will convert the number into a string and then co we compare the, the strings and so on. So we'll attempt more to match the, the types of the objects by doing some implicit type conversions before doing the actual comparison. We may want one or the other, uh, depending on the context, but of course we, you should be aware of the existence uh, uh, of both uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, number uh, doesn't, make, doesn't make any distinction between integral and reals, uh, and so it converts automatically. If we need to have uh, integral numbers, uh, which are very big, uh, so we don't want integral numbers of a given size to be converted automatically into a floating point uh, uh, internal representation, we could use a big int type uh, from the uh, latest version of the library, and they are just written with an n suffix at the end of the number, it means this is forced to be an integer even if it's a very large number hmm? so but there are very strange corner cases that mm, don't uh, don't happen very often there are these uh, special values also so undefined and null are uh, different types uh, undefined comes up uh, whatever uh, you have a variable that you have just declared but not initialized yet so if you declare a variable you don't give a value immediately at the time of the declaration uh, it gets the special value undefined so it's like the uh, you know java usually gives a variable uh, the value of, na of uh, uh, null or python gives the variable a value of none uh, when you declare them without giving uh, without assigning a, 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 a value uh, in some cases null also happens especially when you have uh, uh, an array that that a sparse array that doesn't contains uh, it doesn't contain all the values in every location. Hmm? It's a very strange corner case. Uh, sometimes in the documentation you see the sentence nullish values. Nullish value means uh, null or undefined. Hmm? So there are a lot of, of uh, uh, um, variation on the words uh, uh, to take into account the strangeness of, of the um, 
of the variables uh, usually uh, uh, the favorite value for marking something not defined is actually undefined null is not used very much in the language and then we have also uh, another special value which is called not a number which is actually a number so it's a very strange name because none not a number is one value of the type number hmm? so is a number if you ask for the type of none it uh, will tell you uh, uh, which that is a number is not an undefined but it comes out from uh, uh, arithmetic ex exception so if you divide by zero or something like that uh, or you try to parse uh, uh, a string into a number and the string doesn't represent a number you what you get is not a number is none mm -hmm. it's a value of type uh, number but it's a special uh, identifier for that so you can check uh, if variable equal equal not a number then uh, you can ch check the error okay uh, this for types so we discussed values values with given types uh, for using these values uh, we need of course to uh, to store there in, into variables hmm? in JavaScript uh, variables do not store values they just refer to values so if you have uh, v equals 7 here then you are uh, st storing into the v variable a reference to the object uh, of type number containing the value 7 the same reference v can be used later to refer to a different object in this case a string uh, with a different type so 7 is a value high of type number high is a value of type string and v is a variable that happens to point in that time in that instance of time happens to refer in that instance of time to that specific value um, declaring variable uh, can be made uh, can be uh, done with three different uh, keywords let const and var uh, they have different behavior hmm? uh, the modern ones are let and constant var is the old one that can be used uh, but has a different semantics so we, we should be aware uh, what are the differences uh, let defines a variable um, whose scope is the enclosing block so the the block uh, with the uh, square bra with braces uh, that encloses the variable uh, a variable can also be declared const when uh, it cannot be whose uh, its value cannot be changed later on so it cannot refer to another objects uh, later on so these are the two preferred uh, methods for declaring variables uh, so let's maybe try something in the python tutor uh, I, I already wrote uh, let a equal to one so it declares a variable called a and assigns the value uh, one to it uh, if I, I can also declare a, a, as another variable maybe const b equal to five and uh, uh, okay it will ex if I execute it I will see that uh, we ha I have now two different uh, defined variables and uh, the difference is that I can change a, so a can be two. And uh, so at the end of the execution of the program, uh, a will become two, as you see here. Uh, okay. Uh, and if we try to make b equal to six, uh, we get an error. Uh, and the error is link, uh, is mentioned here assignment to constant variable so you cannot reassign a const um, after we assigned it the first time hmm? um, either a variable can be like we say here in this uh, table uh, a, le a, va there a variable declared with let can be reassigned yes a variable declared with const cannot be reassigned later can we declare no means that uh, once I declare a variable I cannot declare it a second time so if I make a, a mistake writing here let a equal to 2 so let's forget about assigning b it's an error because I'm trying to re-declare a second time the variable a which was already declared so let declares a variable I can assign it many times but they cannot de be declared it more than one time well of course uh, we have uh, uh, scopes so if we include this code into 
uh, braces so these braces may come from an if statement from a for statement and so on um, then we are separating the, the 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 scope the definition of the language so in this case this a down here is not defined we have an error because the a was defined here and it only lives within this scope so the scope of a variable declared with let and const is only oops the enclosing block the enclosing parentheses hmm? uh, while uh, uh, so if you want at this point we can declare again a below but it's a different variable in this time hmm? because the a that we knew from line four was dead was killed in line six as you see here variable b uh, disappears hmm? so if you try to execute this line by line we see that uh, uh, when we open the block uh, we have a and b a and b which are undefined if we go uh, line by line a gets the value one b sorry gets the value should get the value uh, five but then it jumps uh, it's immediately destroyed and after we are outside this block uh, um, a and b disappeared both uh, and uh, this is a new a that has been created in a different context with a different scope hmm? this very uh, this copying of the variables is uh, similar to what happens in the c language if you happen to declare a variable with var instead of let the rules change the rules change because uh, sorry i cannot let it the same variable the rules change because uh, uh, var implicitly has the scope of the enclosing function or the enclosing file if we are not inside the function so uh, the variable is uh, uh, when we you declare it with, with var is valid throughout uh, uh, the file so this a below is also the same as that we have before because the, the scope the braces that do not kill the scope of var and so of course it takes the value of two but uh, we could also have say a equal to um, a times three and a is seven so it will take the value 21 that we show us that uh, actual this seven here for this variable a was remembered down there okay with a let this is not possible with a var it's possible a strange uh, behavior of var is that uh, uh, the definition the declaration is valid even if it's done late so look at what i'm doing i'm putting the var declaration at the bottom the last line and the result is still valid it's still 21 and so shouldn't it throw an error here uh, on line 4 where variable a is not is used but not declared what does it happen here it's uh, we, we don't care about the braces they're not relevant here because var doesn't uh, fill the braces well what is happening is that the, every declaration with var is uh, moved to the top of its uh, scope so actually what we are we write it here and the declaration with var um, have this behavior which is called hoisting in the language definition so the definition is moved to the top of its scope so when, when i write this is equivalent to actually interpreting this way we have var a at the beginning and then we use it so even if you declare it later on the javascript interpreter will push the definition of the variable not the initialization not a given value but the, def the definition the declaration uh, at the beginning of the file hmm? it's strange behavior so uh, sometimes it may be useful in most of the cases it could, could be confusing so that's why uh, we try to prefer using let and const which are more easy to understand hmm? uh, their behavior is easier to understand um there is, was also in uh in an earlier version of the language uh, the possibility of implicit declaration of variables you just use a variable it will get declared implicitly this is forbidden in strict mode so we'll not use it won't be using that uh, possibility hmm. so this is the strange uh, um, and the reason why there are different declarators at a given time in es5 they, they decided that var has very strange uh, behavior 
and so they invented these new ways of declaring variables um, okay these are this is just an example that you can try to run to understand uh, you will see that this uh, uh, statement uh, will generate some errors so you need to comment them one by one and you can experiment uh, the different behaviors of the of variable de declared with let or declared with var at the beginning or at the end of the call hmm? try to familiarize with that the second uh, uh, chapter here is, is easier so the javascript expressions or well, expression are made for uh, computing uh, values from existing values with operators uh, uh, we have a full uh, uh, board of uh, available operators in JavaScript, of course, li like any other language. Uh, and there are not many surprises here. So uh, every assignment, uh, of course, uh, use the equal. Uh, you can assign an expression to a variable. The, so the value resulting from the expression will be the new value to which this variable will refer. It's a reassignment. The first time you may uh, couple the assignment with a declaration of the new variable. So the first time you declare the variable and initialize it with a value. And then you can, if the variable is not const, you can reassign the same variable to a new value. And of course, there are all, all the composite uh, uh, assignment operators, so plus equal, uh, minus equal, uh, times equal, and so on, like, uh, like in C, for example. So nothing new here. The com we have the comparison operators that compare two values uh, and return a boolean value uh, equal uh, not equal uh, greater lesser and and so on the only mm, specific case to to javascript uh, is the triple equal uh, e uh, compar comparator that uh, prevents uh, the type conversion so all of these operators first try to convert the type to match them and then do the comparison the only exception is a triple equal that prevents the uh, the conversion and only returns true if the operands are of the same type in the other cases first javascript tries to match the types and then to do the conversion in the triple equal it uh, does not do any conversion and will only try to match the values and uh, speaking about conversions uh, JavaScript has a, a mechanism, of course, for converting the different values or trying to convert uh, uh, values of different uh, uh, types, uh, especially uh, talking about the primitive types. So the, our primitive types are string, number, and boolean, uh, or maybe any other type of the language, defined language. You can, uh, in this table, I try to summarize the most useful methods uh, for converting uh, um one type to another for example if you have a number and you want to convert it to a string you can use the method to string from the number or string number so use the string constructor or just take number and concatenate with the empty string and this will force a type conversion uh, and the number will be automatically promoted to a string and then concatenated to another string and of course the result will be string this tree the constructs are equivalent the other way around if you have a string and you want to get a number you can call the number constructor giving it the string and so it try to do its best of or course call the parse int or parse float methods they will try to parse the string and give you a number by trying to interpret that with the integer syntax or the floating point uh, syntax or we can just try to do an arithmetic operation that doesn't make sense into the strings for example minus zero and so in this case uh, uh, javascript understands that you cannot subtract a number from a string so we'll try to convert the string to a number uh, and then do the subtraction that will not change the result or plus string uh, plus is the unary plus operator uh, that is defined for numbers and not for strings and so uh, to apply this operator first the string should be converted to number so there are places where actually you are forcing you're asking the javascript interpreter to insert the type conversion by using some kind of operators um, the same is uh, from boolean to number we just call the number constructor then we give you one or zero we already know that the conversion to boolean follows a very simple rule truthy and falsy so falsy let's remember it again one one time more uh, uh, an object is falsy if it's zero minus zero not a number uh, null, undefined, or empty string. 
in all the other cases is true you can force this conversion uh, with the, by calling a boolean constructor or uh, by using the double negation operator so you take a number you you convert it uh, exclamation mark is the is the not operator you make the not and you have it converted to boolean but with the wrong value and so you do a not again of the same value and you get a boolean and uh, again if uh, in, for any type if, if you want to convert it to string you can use uh, the to string method or the string constructor as we were already doing uh, with the numbers but it will also work with any other type objects array and so on so these are the most uh, useful conversion operator that can uh, allow us to jump from type to type and as we mentioned in many cases javascript is will try to apply these operators uh, in automatically without us being forced uh, uh, to, to to write this conversion explicitly we just have to be aware that javascript will apply these type conversions okay other operators uh, and or not behave uh, normally um the the strange thing is that uh, uh, for example with an or operator if the expression one is doesn't say if it's true it says if it can be converted to true so if it's truthy hmm? this means that uh, uh, and if the express one expression one can be converted to true then the or will return expression one itself so even if expression one is a string Okay, the logical or will not return a boolean, but will return expression one, so a string, if the string is not empty. Hmm? So it's a strange behavior when we have the boolean uh, meaning, but uh, the value carried on by the operator may be another type of object, another type of value. Hmm? So for example, uh, in many cases you write A or B by saying that if A is truthy, then return a if a is falsy so it's null or zero or an empty string then return b is a sort of uh, return a but if if for some reason it's falsy then we have a default value which is called b no? it's very useful when you are trying to uh, parse all the uh, maybe the, the input parameter from from the user and so if the user didn't give you a didn't give you a value uh, then you can have a default value uh, for you we can see it in the in the Python tutor for example uh, we can define the name uh, like an empty string and so we can let uh, uh, sentence is uh, uh, for example uh, um, hello sorry a string hello name hmm? so uh, if the name is defined so maybe my name may be fulvio then the sentence will be hello fulvio if the name is not defined uh, well the 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 we have a, a, this very strange uh, string which is missing a name so we we can provide a default value for the name so name is name or you there for example so this means that if name is knowledge so is an uh, in this case an, an empty string uh, this or operator so this first hand uh, is false and so will you uh, uh, return the second hand there if the, the first one is true then the or will return the first hand and so will uh, my name so you will see that many times when you have uh, some optional parameter if you get the parameter and you with the or operator we, you uh, set a default value in the case that parameter is missing uh, of course uh, we have a lot of other operators which are in the standard libraries i don't want to read them but we have all the mathematical functions that you are uh, that you may expect in the library and uh, of course uh, besides assignments we can also have uh, uh, control statements uh, in the language again there are no big surprises here in this chapter we have an if statement we have a switch statement uh, which are very similar in syntax to what we are uh, used to in uh, in, um, in in c more more in java uh, you see more java than c because the expression of a switch uh, may also be a string why in C you know that uh, the expression may only be an integral number uh, 
the behavior is the same the only uh, warning that i uh, that, in, that i'm telling you is that if if uh, uh, conditions uh, uh, use the truthy falsy behavior so always think about uh, what happens if this is a string this is an array uh, when will be considered uh, truth uh, true or when will it be considered false we have a loop statement so it's a four with three conditions we have the do while and while so they really uh, behave in the same way as they behave in c as they behave in java so i'm not uh, saying anything uh, here uh, usually we in the for statement uh, we use a let or a const uh, here for declaring a new variable for the purpose uh, of, of the iteration so for let i e uh, equals zero and so on uh, so that this variable will be scoped inside the for statement uh, it will not be available outside uh, and we don't uh, read clashing uh, uh, the other variables names uh, uh, in, in the statement there are also two special forms or for statements uh, the first one is for objects and the other one is for arrays well the reality is more complex than that but let me just give you this simple interpretation if uh, you have uh, uh, an array or any other type of uh, iterable objects that we'll see that some uh, collections can be iterated over then you can have use the syntax for of in uh, um, in python it would be in in uh, java would be um, column hmm? uh, a variable will iterate uh, over the values of the array so this for will execute twice uh, one with the value of four and one with the value of seven so we say that it will print four and seven uh, this uh, string can also be converted to array and so uh, this code will be executed twice uh, the first time a will point to a string containing only the first character the second time uh, um, with an i so sorry it's not really converted to an array but the string is iter um, can be iterated it's iterable uh, as an object by nature and so it can we can use this form the in object the in for uh, is a bit more strange uh, we'll come to it later when we talk about objects uh, it will uh, iterate not over the iteration of the value but uh, the iteration of the properties of an object mm. So if an object has two properties, X and Y, uh, A will first give you the first property name, not the value. You see, you see the X and not the zero and uh, the property name of the second one. So you can use it to traverse all the properties of objects uh, that maybe you don't know uh, beforehand which properties those objects have. It's uh, something that we'll uh, uh, examine more depth next week when we'll uh, discuss objects. There are other methods uh, that are very uh, often used for iteration and uh, especially for arrays. Uh, um, for example, the for each method. Uh, we will discuss them later uh, because there are uh, methods that are use a functional programming approach for iteration, for example. Uh, so you may know some functional programming for other languages. So we'll discuss this in more detail after we study the functions. Hmm. So uh just remember we need to, to discuss in more detail the in for uh, iteration when we after we discuss objects uh, and the for each uh, and other uh, functional um, iteration methods uh, after we study the functions okay uh, for uh, other control flow constructs of course are those for uh, checking errors and exceptions um, the statements here are very similar to what uh, uh, happens in Java so you have a try catch with an exception type this exception object may be really actually any type of object object there is no uh, very string uh, strong uh, forcing uh, as being uh, say a subclass or something so any object we want usually we use these predefined uh, error types uh, uh, it's called error and not exception in the JavaScript uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, definition of the language uh, but actually the concept is the same that you are familiar with java so nothing uh, uh, new here uh, really uh, the other big topic here and uh, that we deserve, deserves more some attention are arrays arrays are really used uh, is very very much in uh, in, all, in all the languages but especially javascript i think that javascript uh, uh, arrays uh, objects and functions uh, are easy in to understand uh, by themselves uh, 
but the one you we are com when we combine all the three we combine objects arrays and uh, functions we really uh, can discover the power of the language mm -hmm. so let's start from arrays uh, there are primitive types so there are richer functionalities they are dynamically uh, sizes so we can expand or contract an array in any time uh, the elements that are contained into the array do not need to be of the same type of course because an array contains references to values and these values can be of different types it's not a problem okay we have one object which is an array that will co point to uh, objects of different types uh, we must be aware because uh, uh, because of this difference between uh, variables and values uh, that some methods uh, uh, change the array and some methods create new objects uh, that are referred to so we can distinguish between methods that modify the array or some method that create and return a new array to work with mm -hmm. so uh, we when when we in the in the next slides we should be careful about this how do we i create an array well the suggested method there are many methods the preferred one is just using square brackets so this is a, an empty array let v equal to open and close square bracket bracket it's an, an array with zero elements or if we already know the elements that are that we want to put inside the the array we can just list them when we in initialize the variable a, um, a syntax uh, which is equivalent to those one is uh, array dot of one two three so actually these two statements are the same one is more using the square brackets and one is using the of constructor of the array object uh, i think it's uh, unnecessarily complex uh, and so i would prefer the left one uh, the result is creating an array with three location indexed by zero one or two so the indexes are uh, the elements are zero indexed um, and the values are one two three the same may happen if we mix uh, different types. So I have an array which an integer, a number, a string, another number, another and, and the boolean. Well, then nothing special. Just the array is created in this way. V is the reference to the array. You see that V is separate from the array itself. So we may change uh, the array, and so V will refer to a, an array with a change value, or we can change V and make it point. To to a different array so we must be careful with the tutor with the python tutor we can uh, visualize what's happening here how to add the elements if i have an empty element i can just start adding elements in various positions so this uh, array has zero elements then i put something into the first location beware the first location doesn't exist yet i'm creating it in this moment i'm creating the first location by putting a string there then i'm creating a second location by putting a number so every time i put a new uh, element into an exist an, uh, a location that doesn't exist yet well the array is just expanded autom automatically for us so i don't need to to care about uh, um, the current size of the variable or de declare it uh, with a maximum size we declare arrays that are usually empty and then they grow as new elements are added and there's another uh, there's another syntax that uh, in this case we we must know how many elements we have in order to put the eight in the position one and not zero and not two and not two for example well for understanding the position we can we could use the attribute length of the of the variable so in this case v dot length is two because it contains two elements uh, of course in the positions zero and one mm -hmm. uh, we can also use the push method of the array uh, so we start with an empty array and we push a value in this case the value is automatically added at the end of the array and so there are methods for adding elements at the beginning or at the end of the array as this slide is showing so imagine you have an array with a given number of elements even zero you can add an element at the end with the method push you can add a new element at the beginning so in front of the others with the method unshift and you can also take out some elements so you can now you can extract and delete the last element with pop and you can extract and delete the first elements so i have all the others shift left with the shift method so these four methods are very 
uh, common and used so we uh, we don't need to play with indexes to do for loops just to 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 shift elements into the array we can use these methods that are uh, of course uh, more efficient than what you could do by hand and all these methods modify the array in place remember we should always ask ourselves does it modify the array or not it modifies the arrays it doesn't return a new one um, copying so what happens if i copy an array there are two methods for creating a new array equal to a current one the first one is just creating an alias and the second one is making a real copy so uh, as we can imagine if i write something like uh, let uh, alias equal to v i'm just copying the reference so v is an array that i created with some elements we take the reference of this to this array and copy the reference into a new variable this new variable i call it alias just to remember me that is just a new name for something that was already existing so you can use like in, uh, well, in c you call it uh, i just copy the pointer in java you copy the reference okay so in all uh, object-oriented programming also this concept is very clear the array is uh, i created an array i called it v then i copied v into a new variable so the new variable will have the same reference uh, to the previous array if i modify v uh, the array through v then also alias will see the modifications the alternative is creating a copy of the array creating for creating a full copy i should create a new array and then put the elements uh, that were in the old array also copying them in the previous one for that uh, we can use the constructor form of the array with the with the from method so array dot from creates a new array from an existing one from an existing object that can be iterated and uh, in particular an array and copies the current content of v into the elements of the new array so in this case as we see very clearly from the uh, from the screenshots of the python tutor uh, the copy points to a new array which is from this moment on independent from the previous one so if i change v well copy will not change so if, so if v square one uh, i change the eight to nine or ten or twelve well the the eight in copy will remain the same while alias of one will change together with v okay this is of course is a very very simple example so it may seem trivial but actually this is a source of a thousand of very uh, strange errors or problems in your programming so let's try to have it very very clear in mind this same uh, mechanism will also apply to objects it will also apply to functions and so on so let's try always to be very clear uh, whether we are changing the object or whether we are creating a new object and remember how to create new objects in this case we have array.from uh, as we said uh, for iterating over arrays uh, we can use a normal for loop uh, or a for of hmm, like we mentioned before there are many other methods uh, that we are skipping for now and just putting them by for future reference that we'll uh, uh, understand uh, when we do some uh, functional uh, style programming hmm? so let's uh, for the moment we can iterate in the array like we did like we would do in c or with the of uh, operator and in the future we'll learn uh, some uh, um, easier methods to do that arrays i said at the beginning they are very uh, are a rich um, type uh, a rich type of objects and so we can uh, they, have, they already have natively a lot of uh, uh, methods that are predefined so for example you can join two arrays so let's try the example of concatenation uh, i can define an array with uh, one two one four so the squares one four nine sixteen and we can define another array let b equal to i don't know abc b sorry i forgot the quotes c okay 
and they can create a new variable by concatenating the first two a dot concat concatenate b let c equal and you see that it creates a new uh, a new variable uh, with the uh, new array with six elements through uh, the so, sorry seven elements from zero to six the first four are copying from a and the other are copied from uh, from b concat creates a new array you see that here and you see that in the documentation returns a new array it doesn't it does not concatenate into a but it creates a new array even if it's a method from a it will create something new by the way uh, what happens if i create uh, an array with uh, a b c without the quotes hmm? so uh here was a b c were strings here now they are variable names so i'm putting then creating an array look at, look at the right that will contain three elements the first element is a reference to array a the second element is a reference to array B, which is this one. The third element is a reference to array C, which is the concatenated one. And we see here, very clear, that we are creating a new array with three references. And these references are referencing existing objects. So if I change, for example, uh, uh, D, the first, D1, one sorry the one one not, not equal equal uh, z i'm changing this b here into a z uh, through the array here so actually we have different ways of accessing the arrays uh, and there's no nothing that prevents me of for create from creating arrays of arrays or more complex objects hmm? uh, when we we'll, uh, learn about objects we can we will create array of objects or objects containing arrays and so on there's no it's not strange because everything is based on the reference concept so it's an, an array contains a reference to another array hmm? and they can use it in, in this way uh, if i don't like it anymore i could say that d uh, of two I detach it from the other array and, and I will create a new array for it, a new value. Uh, and for, I don't know. And uh, right now, the I'm detaching the third element, it's not pointing to the array, the concatenated array anymore, but it contains a new value by itself, uh, or it can make it point to another new array, which is 777. For example and so it can construct in some in this way so you see that it creates a new array this new array doesn't have a name but it's pointed by the element 2 of array the, of the array that is called d that currently is called d as a reference d hmm. um, let's just be used to try to always visualize in our mind what's happening here uh, when we write some code uh, it's something which is not uh, which is common to all object oriented programming languages like uh, you are working with references and we are creating objects and the two living live in two different spaces uh, okay with this uh, uh, examples uh, we have the, the join method that converts an array into a string by joining all the elements of the array in uh, converting them to strings and joining them with a separator character for example if i want to print uh, uh, the array a uh, with the numbers uh, I could uh, uh, for example console.log which prints uh, a uh, join the elements with a space for example join not joint and we'll print into the uh, console that pops up here the output of the program uh, the elements of the string separated by space if i want sep to separate them with an asterisk uh, you just put that as a separator character and we'll uh, throw it like that mm -hmm. so converting strings into uh, sorry arrays into strings uh, is uh, made by the join operator 
slicing extracts a section of an array and returns a new array so uh, a subarray uh, that starts at the given index up to a given other index uh, creates a new array for example i want to extract this portion of uh, array c so i call e the array c uh, sli slice from three to five so e is a copy from three included to five excluded if i want also to include five i should put six here because the beginning is always included and the end is always excluded and you see that it will create a copy of these elements a new array with these elements um, splice uh, is a different uh, uh, is a powerful function that may remove some elements uh, and add some other elements into an array in place hmm? so in a way uh, you can use it to remove some elements and, and that's it or to add some elements uh, into an intermediate position or to combine the two operations so just to remove elements uh, you just put say an index and a count uh, and you don't provide any new element to replace so it will delete and will shorten the array uh, if you want to add something you just put the index uh, where you want to insert something count to remove zero and a list of elements to be added and so it will expand the the, um, the array and put the elements inside an intermediate position if you combine the two you can do all sort of or so or sort or sort of replacing of the elements hmm? uh, just don't get, make any confusion between slice and splice hmm? splice modifies the array in place slice creates a new array uh, you could experiment with this uh, uh, very complex function reverse gives you the array uh, or transposes the element of the array so it creates an array which works in the other way around uh, in place does not return a new array so for example if i say at this point uh, e dot reverse it will uh, change the order of the element in e does not create a new array hmm? uh, sort sorts the elements uh, in alphabetical order in place we'll see when you see the functions how to modify the sorting and then we have the search functions index of or includes uh, index of searches the elements search the array by seeking whether a given element uh, is included or not uh, from the beginning and last index of search is from from the end of the array uh, includes just tells me whether the value is found found or not so it doesn't tell me where it is only whether it's present or not so these three are used to um, to search for the elements so what you see is that by using concat push pop shift and shift slice uh, sort index of uh, you it's very very rare that you really need to make a four cycle to iterate an array to do something onto an array and most of these methods always give us the primitives that we need uh, to be able to to work with the array so if you think about what you were programming in c well most of the time you were working to the four codes just to search for an element uh, to find duplicates and so on uh, all of this can be done in many cases just with one method from the standard library uh, and of course we will learn also the functional method that will give you more power to work with the arrays so we'll try really to work on a higher level uh, of, of operation with this uh, uh, new kind of objects there are a couple uh, strange of strange operators that are very uh, very useful with the uh, with arrays uh, that is worth uh, noticing uh, and then we are more mostly finished with this kind of presentation um, so the last items are uh, something which is all very peculiar to, to JavaScript the first one is the so-called destructuring assignment uh, what does it mean strangely enough on the left hand side of an assignment can be a declaration with an initialization or just an assignment you may have an array a, a sort of array hmm? when you are defining two variables at the same time x and y or you, you are assigning two existing variables at the same time 
so this is a shorthand for saying x e let x equal to one and let y equal to two in one statement mm -hmm. but it, it's a compact form it may be useful or also the constant for swapping x and y say i assign to x the value of y and assign to y the value of x you can do that without uh, uh, creating an intermediate value mm -hmm. so the mm, the uh, left hand side is just over of the assignment is a structured uh, array so it's a, it's a structure with with different elements javascript will destructure it automatically for you so we'll break it to the, the the components and we'll execute them atomically so we don't need any uh, intermediate parameters uh, for doing that and it works on the right hand side it works on the left hand side of the of the variables and we can also return uh, maybe an array from a function and assign the individual uh, values of the array when you call a function so it's very uh, it's not a complex uh, things it's uh, basically a syntax uh, shortcut uh, that can be very useful and there's another strange operator even stranger this one uh, it's called the spread operator and it has a very strange syntax again the syntax is three dots so the ellipsis operator in some way um, it has different uh, behaviors in the left and the right hand side of the assignments. Uh, in the left hand sides uh, of the assignment uh, is called also the rest operator. So it, we read this like, like this, let x, uh, y equal one, two, three, four, and y, uh, to y we assign the rest operators uh, used with the thread syntax. What does it mean? It means that uh, we have an array of four elements on the right hand side. X uh, takes the first one, Y takes the rest, so all the other ones. So X will get one and Y will get two, the, an, an array containing two, three, four. So it's very easy to separate when you are making an assignment to separate the first element from the others, for example. Uh, you can spread, uh, you can uh, use the rest as the first element, so you will eat uh, everything except the last ones that you mentioned explicitly, or you can use it like this uh, by uh, extracting the first elements with a name and then putting, not forgetting about the others, putting them into an, another container when you can, where you can use them later on. Um, the same uh, may work uh, on the right hand side so in this case we have a, a lyrics variable which is an array and uh, inside this array we have uh, parts uh, which is another array we don't want to um, make uh, this point to the other array but rather we would like to insert uh, the values there then maybe it's better if we explain it uh, with, um, with with our example code let me make it, let's make it's a bit more polished so uh, let's uh, okay like that okay so if you have uh, we just remove uh, all the examples that we made later we have this array and uh, um, imagine we are we want to create an array that contains some this ABC hmm, inside uh, other values between other values so let uh, d equal uh, maybe i want uh, an asterisk and then abc so the value of the v array and then another asterisk for example so what i'm doing here we already know that i'm creating an array with three elements uh, and the second one is uh, a reference to b well this means that uh, uh, in the second case i should always uh, uh, go back to the original array if i want to actually copy these values abc inside this array i can do that by spreading b so this takes javascript to take the b array extract its elements and put them in line as they were different elements here and you see that right now i'm copying the elements and then putting them uh, in the place uh, where they were so i decompose the array take them with the the individual elements and put them into the array hmm? so it's a strange operator with 
different meanings uh, on the left hand side and on the right hand side on the right hand side it takes an element a, a structure element and decomposes that uh, and uses the components there uh, on the left hand side uh, you it takes the rest of, uh, of a complex data structure that was not already destructured into some other variables it looks strange but you see a lot of javascript code that takes uh, uh, advantage of these operators to make really uh, clear or uh, quick and clear what you are doing with the array so you don't need to make a strange loop uh, to create the array you try to use these operators again to work at a higher level um, of, of programming hmm? uh, by the way uh, we already uh, saw that uh, uh, copying a value cre uh, um, creating a copy of an array can use the from operator but another very uh, easy way of creating a copy is uh, just defining a new array by spreading the value of the old one into this new array. So this, uh, I, would, I would prefer you know, using this form with the spread operator rather than the from operator because it prevents me from remembering every time what from uh, represents and the difference between from and of. Uh, so the spread is just uh, a, a quick way of creating a new copy for example if you want to create a copy of b let uh, e, e be a copy of b and we create uh, a new value that was created by copying the elements of b it's a, sp it's a special case of what we did with, or what we did uh, with the variable d hmm? uh, they may be look strange at the beginning they make uh, it takes some while to get accustomed to those uh, operators but uh, actually they are uh, the ones that make uh, javascript programming very fluent uh, when um, dealing with objects and so on uh, by the way the spread operator will also work with objects and we'll see it later uh, in the next week the last topic for today is uh, uh, strings which are uh, basically very easy because they are an, um, a predefined type of the language uh, the only the, the most important word that you should remember from these uh, slides is that uh, strings are immutable you cannot change a string hmm? uh, well this is true also in java uh, so it's not a surprise for us uh, um so they it's a sort of a collection so it is a sequence of characters but you cannot modify that so in this case all the methods that work with strings will always return new strings there is not a single method that will be able to change the value of a string so in that sense uh, it's uh, much more uh, much easier than working with uh, um with the, the with the, with arrays where we have to take into account or i am i modifying it i mean cre creating a copy and so on in this case there are always copies a string does never change hmm? um, there are no big surprises over the string operators uh, so we can concatenate you can index a string you can get the number of characters the length uh, or well uh, uh, search for elements or substrings, uh, uh, concatenate strings uh, is the same as the plus operator here. Uh, split uh, a string into array, which is the opposite operator than join. So you can join an array to create a string, you can split a string to create an array, and so on. We can extract a substring or a slice, as you call that, uh, and you can also search a regular expression to string and so on. You can trim white space at the, at the beginning and at the end of the string, uh, and so on. So there are very easy methods uh, for, for manipulating strings. Just have a look at them. Uh, and there is also a, a new feature of the language, which this is new. So we'll, we'll give a bit more of attention to that, uh, which is called uh, uh, template literals. Uh, temp strings can be defined in JavaScript using the single quotes or the double quotes. But they can also be defined using the back quotes, so the back tick. Hmm? It's a character that you usually find in the top left corner of the, your uh, keyboard. Uh, you don't use it very often. Um, and in Italian keyboards uh, is also um, not present, so it will be easy, difficult to, to, to find. Um, but uh, it changes the meaning of the string. If you have a string defined with a back uh, tick or back apostrophe, or reverse apostrophe uh, usually you call the back tick uh, because it's a simple way of saying them the string uh, 
can contain reference to variables so it's not called it's not a string anymore it's not called string anymore it's called a, a template no it's a literal form of a template this means that the string will interpolate automatically uh, an expression any kind of javascript expression usually don't we don't want to make a lot of confusion we just use uh, um, single variables that uh, uh, are taken from the context so in this case hello dollar name uh, expands to hello bill because name the name variable or the expression that we call the name variable is uh, has been defined as bill this can save us a lot of time in concatenating strings so if you want to create a message instead of concatenating different parts of that uh, you can just uh, uh, use this uh, um, syntax uh, uh, you remember what we did at the beginning with the or operator so um, remember your straight always uh, when you delete your straight uh, we wanted to write hello your name or herald there if the name was not uh, present so we can do that uh, uh, let name sorry let name uguale equal to fulvio for example and then let message we can use a, a, a string literal a template literal by using hello name and of course it, it will expand to hello fulvio uh, but we can also insert uh, the, the the default expression or there so in this case fulvio is defined so it will exp the expression will expand to hello fulvio but if the string would be empty or undefined it will expand to hello there so it's a very powerful way of formatting strings uh, of creating strings by interpolating values even with some expressions that can customize them and will avoid a lot of if statements or they make the the, um, the code uh, very ugly and, um, and not very nice to see hmm. uh, another usage of for this template literals is that uh, these template literals may contain new lines so if you have a st very long string that will span several lines uh, you can define that uh, as, a, as a template literal even if you don't need to interpolate any values uh, then they can be used as a syntax for multi-line strings hmm. so this is a uh, again it's a uh, there are several language features that make you uh, work easily and very fast with strings and arrays let's try to make use of them and not you and not trying to program like we did in in less powerful languages okay i think that's all for uh, this first part of the presentation it was a, a long journey and we try to touch the more specific point of the javascript languages uh, in the variables types uh, uh, arrays uh, and somewhat the strings um, the next class will be uh, again uh, by trying to touch the other let's say two most uh, important uh, uh, concepts in the language uh, uh, basically are uh, um, objects and functions we we give a separate uh, some, um, lesson for objects and functions because uh, they are much more different different than the current one so arrays are, are different than other languages but not so different strings are different but not so different from java for example uh, for example the handling of types and variable is different but not so but not so different from python on the other hand uh, uh, objects and functions are quite uh, quite distinct features than these other ones and so we will uh, uh, spend uh, um, the next week uh, in studying them in more depth Thank you for the moment.